Hello, my name is Charlotte Slaense and I'm going to give you an overview of the abstract The Role of Cognography in Endoscopy Patients Undergoing Nurse Administered Propofol Sedation, a randomized study. In 2007, we introduced Nurse Administered Propofol Sedation at the Endoscopy Department at Gentofte Hospital, Denmark. We did this to reduce the patient discomfort and the number of uncompleted procedures. Nurse administered propofol sedation is a low dose propofol sedation provided by endoscopy nurses. The endoscopy nurses had been trained in the administration of propofol and the handling of respiratory uh, adverse events. Propofol is an anesthetic that has an associated risk of cardiorespiratory depression um, and to address this problem we did this study and so the objective of the study is uh, whether the cardiography can reduce the level, duration and number of hypoxic events. The study was performed as a randomized controlled trial with eligible patients being endoscopy patients that were compliant with the criteria of NAPS. The control group uh, was monitored with electrocardiogram, pulse oximetry, heart rate and blood pressure. And additionally, all patients received 2 to 3 liters of oxygen per minute. And Propofol was given as an IV bolus administration. In the intervention group, the standard monitoring was performed and additionally, capnography was added. If we look at the baseline data, we see we had 540 patients included in analysis. The 277 patients in the control group and 263 patients in the intervention group. We found no significant difference between any of the baseline data between groups. If we look at our primary outcomes, the number of hypoxic events seems to be reduced in the intervention group, but again, no significant difference is found. At the level of hypoxic events, we also found in two out of three levels a reduction in the number of hypoxic events, but at the most severe hypoxic level, the distribution were alike. If we look at the duration of hypoxic events, we see a reduction in the intervention group, but again, no significant difference. Secondary outcomes were actions taken against respiratory depression, such as suction, increased oxygen supply, or page anesthesia. And we found no difference in uh, results. We also looked at the cumulative number of hypoxic events in the two groups and found that we have no hypoxic events in the intervention group in procedures uh, past 25.6 minutes. If we look at the control group, events still showed past 40 minutes into the procedure. So, capnography is of assistance in long uh, duration procedures. We also looked at the ability of the capnography to predict hypoxic events. And we did a correlation between the entitled carbon dioxide and respiratory rate. Uh, two changes in saturation. And we found that the capnography actually predicts changes in saturation and do so up to 36 seconds prior to an event. In conclusion, we found that capnography seems to reduce the duration and the number of hypoxic events, but the results were not significant. Moreover, uh, capnography is of assistance in procedures of a long duration and capnography is able to predict um, changes in saturation up until 36 seconds prior to an event.